Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for being here. This is a tremendous opportunity for all of us to be here. <laughs> First of all, I want to start thanking you uh, for taking the time out of your afternoon to, to join us here. Uh, we've seen so many Red Talks, and uh, it's, uh, it's been a great run. Thank you, ladies, for putting this together. Uh, I want to start giving special thanks, because this is also what we need to do as a class. It's been a great run, and uh, there's individuals that have contributed to this class uniquely. Um, special thanks to Lawrence Locum for his <laughs> contribution. Anywhere you see him dancing around, wherever he has an opportunity, he hears a beat, he dances salsa. Could be anything, but he dances salsa to that. Thank you to Mr. Steve Federico for your passion for Ruloffs. This business would not be the same without you, so thank you to that. Uh, thank you to the soccer team for uh, finally, after 34 years, winning something. It's, it's <laughs> come on. Thank you for not embarrassing me after 34 years, you know. But but thank you for that, and thank you for uh, to to the MBA class of 2017. We've uh, we've made uh, made a mark. I think that uh, future generation generations to come uh, will not have a place to party thanks to us, and that means that we had a good time. <laughs> we had a tremendous time, we enjoyed ourselves, and that, that's what I'm here to tell you about it, and that's my point here. Um, life is difficult, right? Life is hard, we, we all go through ups and downs, but we always have to enjoy it. We always have to find something that we can grasp on and have fun with. That's the way that I've lived my life. And, and to give you a little bit of context on that, I'll, I'll run you, and, and if you want, to know the whole story, we can go down to rule offs with Mr. Federico and have a couple of drinks and I'll tell you all about it, but I'll, I'll just run you through the main highlights of what, you know, what's been life for me. Uh, so I'm originally from Guatemala. It's a, a small country in Central America. And by America, I don't mean Nebraska, I mean America. <laughs> and uh, I was there playing soccer. I started there as a soccer player. Why? Because I saw soccer, uh, soccer players on the TV and it was great. You know, these guys are living a good life, you know, they're enjoying themselves. Why not, right? Let me try it. And I tried it, and luckily I, I was able to do it. Played a little bit until I got my knee busted. And uh, that was it. That was the end of the soccer career. Mr. Elan, my friend, also had something similar happen to him. But then, so I looked at that as an opportunity to do something else. I was fit, you know, pretty ripped back then. <laughs> and, uh, you know, somebody said to me, would you, would you be interested in being in a band? So a band, that, that looks pretty interesting, you know. I always liked the guitars and all that. And was, like a Guatemalan Guns N' Roses type of thing? Well, why not? <laughs> so I you know, got my guitar, let my hair grow, and I was ready to go, and I showed up to the practice for, uh, one time, and they told me, what are you doing? I'm all dressed in black and all long hair and all looking bad. There's a boy band we're here to, oh, a boy band, interesting. So picture the Guatemalan version of the Backstreet Boys, <laughs> if you can't picture something like that. And I had tremendous pictures to show you, but anyways, I did that, that was great. We traveled you know, uh, throughout Central America and Mexico, which is an, an addendum to Central America. Uh, and uh, it was fun, we had a great time, it was amazing. But I could not be in a boy band forever, right? I had, you know, uh, as a 44 year old, it doesn't look good. So I decided, well, well, what's next? What else can I do? And, and of course, an education could be a possibility. I said, okay, let's go to school. But Guatemala was not the, place, the best place to go to college. Uh, I saw on TV again, the beautiful parties and spring break MTV, uh, I'm not gonna disclose my age, but back then, I said, oh, that looks like a, like a fun place to go. Let's go to the US. I packed my stuff and I visited a friend in New Jersey. Big thing is that you need a little bit of money to go to college, right? It's not free. I thought and back then it wasn't. Um, so I needed to save a little bit of money. What, what can I do to get some money to pay for my first uh, college uh, semester? So I was walking around New Jersey and, uh, you know, came across a factory. And, uh, you know, knocked on the door. I said, listen, I need a job. You have anything for me? He said, well, you know, you know, how do you know how to do anything? I said, not really. Perfect. Put on this uh, hairnet, and uh, you're going to be making cheese now. <laughs> cheese, all right. Well, that's tremendous. What type of cheese are we going to make? Let's well, start with the easy thing, mozzarella. Okay, you all eat mozzarella in your pizza. Do you know how it's made? A tremendous process. It's very interesting. <laughs> They're not the little mozzarella shredded you know, things that you eat. You get these huge balls of 40-pound mozzarellas that you have to carry around, one on each arm, and this floor is very slippery. So God forbid you fall. Whatever happens, break your back, but always put the mozzarella up. Don't let the mozzarella put, that's 40 pounds of mozzarella. So I did that. The whole story is I did the mozzarella, got my money to, to go for my first year of college, but I was sick of the cold. It was too cold in New Jersey. I didn't like it. So where does a young man, you know, big biceps, but lifting mozzarella, to go to school? So well, Miami doesn't sound like a bad idea, does it, Mr. Frederick? 
So I ended up going to Miami. And uh, um, while I was, I was in Miami, I started obviously finishing my, my, my college education. Uh, a, a friend of mine who played soccer with me, um, back then I lived in a small efficiency that had the view to the washing machine. Uh, <laughs> we visited this friend of mine and he, his uncle had a beautiful apartment overlooking the bay. I said, Billy, well, what, did you, what does your uncle do that he's got all this? Oh, he's a financial advisor. A financial advisor? Mm, that sounds interesting. <laughs> I said, okay. What does one need to do to become a financial advisor? Well, you need to pass your licenses. Ah, okay, okay, let's go, let's try it. And I became a financial advisor. <laughs> it's not, not just like that, right? A <laughs> little bit of work into that, but, but I did. And there's an interesting part of this story because uh, while I was doing you know, my, my work, I was working in, in, in Miami and mostly with Latin American clients, the, the, the firm that I worked with uh, had uh, two, two of the partners branched out. And I said, Mario, you're one of the top producers. We need you with us. You are going to be a partner with us in a new venture. We're going to give you a third of the business. Come with us. You know, and something didn't feel right. I said, you know, I've always done crazy things, but eh, this one was a little bit too iffy. They had this uh, special uh, right to sell World Bank bonds that I wasn't really very sure about. So I passed on it. By the way, these two guys were 28, 30 years old, driving to Porsches in Miami Beach, living the life, and I was still in my efficiency, but hey, you know, I passed on that. Fast forward three months later, I see it on the uh, uh, front page of the newspaper, two arrested for faking World Bank bonds, and they went to jail. So. Oof, that was close, right? Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was a close one. So, um, decided to continue doing what I was doing. I did, you know, relatively well. I was uh, moving up the ranks in the, the firm that I, that I worked. And I had it good. I'm not going to lie to you. I had it good. I, I was in Miami. I had the apartment now with the view. I had the, the, the car, the bike, everything. Uh, but something was missing. Something was missing. And, and that thing that was missing was the essence of what I've been living my life with. Always looking to do something new and have an adventure and an experience. And, and I decided to, to talk to a friend of mine who has always been there. And I, and I asked him, you know, there's all this buzz about MBA and what people do with their MBAs. And what, what is this all about? Well, it's a two-year program. You should do, the, two, uh, you should do the, uh, the part-time. It'll be easier for you. Do the executive MBA. You're already. The two-year program sounds interesting. That's something that it, it'll change a little bit of what I'm doing here. I needed a break. Of course, all the benefits of it, new job and that, but I really did it just because it was something different. It was something exciting. And it was going to give me another chapter to write in my story. So I did it. And I went through this, uh, this uh, two years with all of you here and wrote many stories, all of probably, you know, we can talk about them at Sage Social, of what we've done and we haven't done. But my message to you today, and I brought two things there, but you know, two books, two items, is you have the option of living your life with fear, living your life with concerns, and just you know, being scared at what happens around you. And you have the option of doing that, but also doing it with fun and exciting activities that make you, make you happy. So whatever decisions you try to do and whatever you do going forward after we graduate, I invite you to write another chapter in your story, but do so having fun, enjoying it, and making sure that every step you take, you have a good time doing it. Thank you.